today we're checking out Titanus Abaddon, the newest kaiju in the MonsterVerse and the main villain of like the upcoming game that was just released. I have my doubts extremely because spiders just don't excite me much. It's just a big spider, man. Like there's so many other kaiju to work with. There's so many other ones we need more gameplay of that. I don't know. I just don't get that hyped about spiders, but maybe it'll end up being amazing. I don't know. I suppose we'll see. Either way, leave a like, subscribe, subscribe to Goji Center, and let's get into it. All right. Today on Koji Center, the MonsterVerse roster of Titans has been expanded once again with the introduction of a new Titan, Titanus Abaddon. Oh, man. In this episode, we'll be doing a quick speculative breakdown of what we know about this Titan, breaking down all physical characteristics and seeing how it might fare against other kaiju like Kong. I see. Subscribe if you haven't and let's dive right in. I'm calling it now. Based on the an anatomical structure of a spider, it's not the most agile thing their whole like strategy is based on webbing up creatures so they get like the ambush i think kong can beat the crap out of this thing effortlessly to fully understand this titan we must first take into account certain events that happened in the monsterverse timeline some time ago we are technically talking about post 2014 when godzilla first emerged against the mutos titanus abaddon is a titan that technically already existed in the monsterverse lore the first time we've heard about this kaiju was actually back in 2019 in godzilla Godzilla King of the Monsters. On the screen, on the screen in the Argo. I know stuff. But before those events, more specifically between the years of 2014 and 2019, Monarch had started what might have been the most expensive initiative of the century, building multiple outposts around the world in record time, or should we say containment facilities around more than 17 Titans that were rapidly being discovered around the world. Oh. One of these being Titanus Abaddon. Titanus Abaddon before 2019 was Oklahoma? discovered in oh, Wyoming. Wyoming in the United States. More specifically, somewhere underneath a natural landmark known as Devil's Tower. The hell is that thing, bro? That exists in real life? What? crap is going on in Wyoming? That's weirder than an actual kaiju. What is that? Is that like a past Titan species that used to live here and that's like the leftover remnants? I hope that's it. To study this creature- What is that? How does it even happen in nature? <laughs> how do, could someone explain this to me? I understand erosion, but how does that happen? But under containment, dozens of engineers, architects, monarch scientists, and contractors rapidly began the construction of a containment facility around this Titan, wherever it was hidden. This place, Devil's How? Tower, might have been one of the many reasons why this Titan was named Titanus Abaddon. Why is there not an American flag at the top of Devil's Tower? We used to be a country. Why? Well, this name does hold a pretty sinister origin. Ooh. The word Abaddon originates oh. from the biblical term in the book of Revelations referring to an angel of death, king or angel of the bottomless pit. This entity ruled over a vast army of what are described as locusts or some sort of arthropods with the faces of men, teeth similar to that of lions and hardened armor. Ooh. Monarch scientists, upon seeing the characteristics of this titan, may have opted for the name Abaddon since it did more or less share some visual traits of the types of creatures the mythical Abaddon would command. First off, that image they just showed is haunting. Second, I grew up on Supernatural, so to me, Abaddon is more of like a hot red-headed chick who had probably let spit on me. After the facility was finished, probably. sometime before 2019, the facility would have had a kill switch implemented. Every single one of these monarch containment centers had one. And Wait, is that Abaddon? Yep, it's that chick. Okay, wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally say a guy could pee on me. Wait, I mean spit. And each was specifically designed to kill a certain type of titan. Monarch did have a protocol in place in case of any kaiju breach emergencies. Come 2019, when Ghidorah woke up and the explosion of the oxygen destroyer. Did they just say they had a strategy to contain the kaiju during any breach? Kaiju breach emergency. These Monarch containment centers had one, and each was specifically designed to kill a certain type of titan. Wait, why couldn't they just kill them all when they were all breaking free then? I'm so confused. Monarch did have a protocol in place in case of any kaiju breach emergencies. Come yeah. 2019, when huh? Ghidorah woke up and the explosion of the oxygen destroyer. Ghidorah amplified his alpha call, commanding all titans around the world to wake up and begin causing mass destruction in populated regions, Titanus Abaddon being one of them. There are no exact details on how Titanus Abaddon escaped his enclosure, but one thing is clear. Almost, if not every single titan made it out of its enclosure and escaped, including this one. 
Titanus Abaddon would then wake up from hibernation from underneath this rock formation and make its way to the nearest highly populated area. After Madison Russell activated the Orca in Boston, all Titans ceased to attack and began to make their way to help their Alpha defeat Godzilla. Obviously, this didn't go to plan, and soon after, we learned that Abaddon did not make it on time to help Ghidorah. Sometime later in Godzilla Dominion, we saw how Godzilla called all Titans to go back to hibernation. We'd like to imagine that Titanus Abaddon did obey Godzilla, at least for some time. So, this is all we knew about Titanus Abaddon up to this point. Now, on August 19th, 2024, a new game trailer was released featuring this very Titan, Titanus Abaddon, confirming its visual appearance and a matchup against another Alpha Titan, Kong. It's now time to enter the analysis platform. Oh Thankfully, boy. Thankfully, the trailer did show us around 90% of this Titan's entire body. The Goji Center team put together a speculative recreation of this Titan based on the footage seen in the trailer. Immediately, we'll notice some attributes that were mentioned in the biblical depiction of the creatures controlled by Abaddon. The most notable feature of this kaiju is the skull-faced formation on top of its head, technically known as a spider's cephalothorax, which houses the arachnid's brain and other vital organs such as its eight eyes. This this skull formation is reminiscent of the faces of men mentioned in Revelations 9, verse 7. Additionally, Damn. we find that as the name Arachnid suggests, this Titan does have some sort of armor covering its limbs and other body parts. Why is the Titan unable to kill that one guy in all these clips of the game, though? Does that bother anyone else? Like, it's supposed to be this big, epic Titan. You can get the this guy. The skeleton would be the equivalent of the iron plate armor mentioned in verse 9. Finally, another attribute borrowed from the biblical scripture is is the mention of a jaw full of teeth. In the game trailer, if you look closely, you'll find that this Titan, unlike real spiders, has a jaw similar to that of most vertebrates. Tarantulas, for instance, have fangs that they use to inject prey with venom and also to tear prey apart before being pulled into their tubed mouth for consumption. Tubed Not mouth? This one, though. This Titan, despite sharing many arachnid attributes, has evolved to have a jaw filled with teeth capable of swallowing large chunks of meat and not relying on pre-digesting its food similar to tarantulas. This takes us to our next body part, the legs. True to arachnid properties, this titan has a total of eight legs. Titanicilla, for instance, had a total of six. But are these legs more lethal? We'd like to think that these are actually quite similar. Both Abaddon and Scylla seem to have sharp tips on the end of each of their legs, using these as weapons for stabbing into the soft, fleshy surface areas of big or small creatures. The tips of Titanus Abaddon however, are particularly sharp, almost like needles. This is especially terrifying since an animal this big has no business having claws this meticulously sharp, unless it evolved to also feed on or torment small creatures such as us, humans. Yeah, here's where this gets a little dark. Again, we must make reference to the biblical passage that says that these creatures are meant to torment humanity. So, things are beginning to add up here. Seems it's as so if this biblical. Titan has been designed well enough to terrorize small organisms such as us. Imagine a Titan with a human skull on its cephalothorax instilling terror on anything that lays eyes on it, capable of showing up to a city and absolutely destroying it. All meanwhile impaling random running humans one by one and bringing them close to his large mouth. Not wasting time by injecting them with venom and pre-digesting them, no, just throwing them in its mouth. And not only that, potentially preserving them in silk casings for later consumption. It's like confusing though, because then why are the teeth so big? Shouldn't it have some tiny teeth in there specifically for its human? I don't know, maybe it's just supposed to look cool, I don't know. Or, who knows, instilling even more terror in the surviving inhabitants. Yeah, spiders are known for preserving prey in silk casings. In the game trailer, we do see these hanging objects that do more or less resemble dead people delicately wrapped in silk. Damn. Logically, a titan this large shouldn't waste its time and energy killing small creatures since these aren't even worth the caloric output. After all, this is a titan and would really search after radioactive sources. This tells us a lot about its character. Moving on to the psychological realm of things, it's likely that this fella, Titanus Abaddon, is actually quite smart, unlike real-life arachnids. This guy is intelligent enough to probably obsess over certain actions, such as finding pleasure in tormenting other intelligent beings, such as humans. 
And in this new game coming up, we'll likely see this titan take its time chasing the main character. Again, a creature this big has no real reason to spend all its energy chasing after a peanut's worth of calories. Unless it's doing it for fun or for a different reason. Ooh. In the game trailer, we do notice this little guy. Uh, proportionally small. Let's be real, if we see any one of these spiders crawling around, the whole town's gotta go. These are likely smaller creatures that are either controlled by Abaddon itself, sending these little fellas to hunt down any stray humans that escaped in small, narrow spaces. This wouldn't be the first time it's we literally see like Cloverfield in the MonsterVerse. In Godzilla Dominion, we find cases such as that of the Murderfish controlling smaller Dunkleosteus type creatures, and Camazots, who also had his minions. Abaddon may have the same dynamic going on here. If not, these may just end up being the offspring. At the end of the game trailer, we do have the confirmation that this titan will face Kong in combat. Now, note that this Kong game bats. takes place shortly after the events of Godzilla vs. Kong in the year 2024, meaning that Kong will briefly have to re-emerge to the surface world for reasons that will be revealed in-game. This fight will be interesting, since we see Kong in this trailer without any weapons, and he may end up needing them, since Titanus Abaddon is whoa, armed whoa, with whoa. long appendages that give it a clear advantage and range. One one well-placed strike at a soft, squishy organ can spell doom to the ape, especially since this titan can also snap back with a mouthful of teeth. We'll be covering this titan again in the near future once more information is released. It is confusing. They do cover a lot of very confusing things right there. Like that thing winding up and striking with its with its spider finger or whatever would use up so much energy and calories. Like it's eventually going to get hungry just doing that, barely filling up with little micro scraps of calories off the humans. It almost just doesn't seem logical. Like there's not a lot of logic to it at all. I don't really know what to think about this game. I want to support the MonsterVerse in every way I can. And I'll still definitely play the game and beat it, obviously. It's just like, it's, I guess I just wasn't excited over the concept of a giant kaiju spider. Spider. Like spiders seem so basic. We have so many crazy things we can get into and like spiders just aren't that sexy. Like it's like a spider. I don't know. They've been the concept of horror things forever. I feel like with Kaiju, I like, I like some diversity, some ancient mega species, not just like spider, but it's big. I don't know. I'm sure it'll be exciting in one way or another. I wish Toho would release their freaking grip on like other Godzilla or just like, uh, I guess, yeah, just Godzilla. I'm going to forever be slightly disappointed with any Kaiju game that drops as long as it doesn't have have Godzilla. I feel like that's what people really want, or at least let us play as Kong. No one wants to play as humans anymore, man. We're freaking sick of it. I'll still play the damn game, but I'm just saying. Who else down below thinks we need this fighting game right here? This is a fan-made photo. This right here would answer, like, this is all any kaiju fan wants. This would make a billion dollars, bro. It's exhausting they don't notice this. Either way, though, Goji Center did a magnificent job of covering the situation and letting us know more about Abaddon, this giant kaiju spider, who for some reason is a destroyer of humanity, but can't seem to get her claws on this one little dude. I don't think they think these things through, man. Either way, though, leave a like, subscribe, subscribe to Goji Center, and I'll see you later. <laughs>